July was my birthday month, so I decided to treat myself. And boy, did I. Hi, my name is Sarah and my channel is Naughty Gnome Crafts. Welcome. If this is your first time viewing my channel, thanks so much for stopping by. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Today's video is going to be my July haul and my August plans. I bought quite a few things in July, so I have a lot to share with you. And I have one very big thing, but you're going to have to watch till the end of the video to find out what it is. So for my August plans, the way that I see it, this is the last month that I want to be making things for summer. Last year, I think I was making summer items into September or maybe even October, although I don't think so. But I ended up with a few pieces that I never even wore for an entire year because it just got too cold to wear them. So I don't want to make that mistake again this year. So I'm going to cut myself off. This is my last chance to sew up those things that I've been wanting to sew for the summertime. So that's what my plans are going to be. And because I do have quite of a, a substantial haul to share with you, a lot of those plans are going to be from that haul. So I'm just going to integrate my plans and my haul as we go. So plan number one is actually a collab that I am doing with Fatmata of traditional inspired meaningful art, I think. I will put her channel up on the screen so you can see what it is. She is a wonderful YouTuber. She makes really great things out of amazing fabrics, and I am so happy to be collaborating with her. We're doing something a little bit different that I haven't really done before, but I don't want to go into too many details, so um, that will be coming later on this month, and that is definitely the first plan on my list of things to do. Plan number two is actually for a gift. My niece's birthday is in the month of August, and she's going to be 11 and actually last year um, I, when I visited she told me that she's not really into clothes but I was thinking that I could make her a bucket hat because she does live in quite a warm place and I figure it's never a bad idea to keep yourself out of the sun as much as possible so I thought she could really use a bucket hat and I have tons of really adorable quilting cotton prints in my stash that I could use to make a bucket hat. I have discovered that Waves and Wild has a free bucket hat pattern for all different sizes and um, quite a few people in the sewing community have made that recently so I can't remember exactly who I heard it from first but I think that I will try to use that pattern to make my niece a hat for her birthday. Now let's get into the haul. My first purchase was from Mood Fabrics and I only bought two things. Um, this fabric is actually for my husband. I bought him some stretch cotton twill in this very deep um, olive green color and I'm going to make him another pair of Thread Theory Jutland pants. I believe I stated when I talked about this that he wants me to duplicate some ready wear pants that have been discontinued and he wants a lot of pairs. So I made him up a tester pair out of some fabric that I got from Joanne and it was a stretch fabric and he said that he actually really likes the stretch fabric because it's very comfortable. So I went ahead and bought this fabric from Mood thinking that it would probably be a higher quality than the one that I got from Joanne. I did not realize when I purchased it just how stretchy it is. It is a very, very stretchy fabric. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but it is really, really stretchy. So I hope that it's not going to be too stretchy for my purposes, but that is the plan for this. I'm not actually going to sew it up in the month of August. I'm gonna wait until the fall because I just think this color would be really great for the fall. So I'm hoping that I'll make him a fall pair and then maybe in the winter I can make him another one out of corduroy. But that is eventually what I'm gonna do with this um, fabric is to make a pair of Jutland pants. The other fabric that I got from Mood is another stretch cotton twill and it is in this ivory color. It's not white, but it's not super creamy either. It's just a little bit off white, I would say. And it is also very stretchy, although it's not as stretchy as the green was. But it's a nice fabric. I don't think it's gonna be sheer. And this is in my August plans, so I want to make another pair of Megan Nielsen Ash jeans. I really like wearing white pants in the summer. I don't currently have any, and I think making a white pair of jeans is just going to be a staple that I'll have in my closet forever, um, at least until it gets stained and I have to make a new pair. So I think that I'm probably going to do the straight leg version of the Ash, and um, this is on my plans list because I want to get it sewn up before summer is over. And then I can actually wear white jeans three seasons out of the year, but I don't wear them in the winter because of all of the salt and the mud. It'll just get them like permanently dirty. So I don't wear white in the winter, but otherwise I could wear these the rest of the year. So I'll still get plenty of use out of this, even though it is a little bit late in the season to be making white pants for summer. So the second shop I ordered from is Style Maker Fabrics. If you sign up for their newsletter, every year StyleMaker will send you a 20% off coupon for your birthday month. So I'm always very excited to get that coupon because StyleMaker is one of my favorite shops. So I tried to restrain myself. I ordered four pieces of fabric, one of which I've actually already sewn up, so you will see that in my July makes. 
but the rest of these I still have to show you. I got some double gauze in this beautiful print. It's this actually this is like moderately soft. I was gonna say it's so soft, but actually I'd say it's moderately soft. It's not very, very soft, but it is nice and lightweight. And I got two yards of this because I want to make myself a pair of pajamas. I know that I've just been seeing so many people in the sewing community make double gauze pajamas and it just sounds so luxurious and so wonderful that I wanted to get in on it too. I don't know yet what patterns that I'm gonna make, but I'm probably gonna do like a sleeveless tank top and then just some shorts. Um, but I don't have actually immediate plans to make this. This can wait a little while because I have pajamas in my wardrobe. I don't have a need for them right now. So this is not in my August plans list, but I will enjoy making these up into pajamas eventually. The next fabric from Style Maker is this uh, shirting weight linen in this natural color. It has a lot of drape. It's already very soft and it's just really beautiful. And this is perfect for what I had been wanting it for. There was a new look pattern that I had bought a few months ago that has a statement collar with a little ruffle and I had seen Emily Lightly make a very similar shirt out of a natural colored linen and I just really really liked the juxtaposition of the kind of earthy tone natural linen combined with those sweet ruffles on the collar so I really wanted a shirt like that for myself. So this is in my August plans list because I actually think I will get quite a bit of wear out of this in the fall as well because of the color so I'm really really enjoying looking forward to sewing that up and I think it'll make a beautiful shirt. The last piece of fabric that I got from StyleMaker is a showstopper. I just could not resist this one. It is a rayon chalet fabric in this gorgeous, beautiful, bright print. I bought two yards of this and originally I had bought it to make a skirt, but when it arrived in the mail, I just think that it is so gorgeous. I think it's gonna have to be a dress of some kind. I'm not sure which one yet. I was thinking possibly the Sicily slip dress, but I haven't made up my mind yet. And because I don't know quite what I wanna do with this yet and I wanna do it justice, I'm gonna hold on to this probably and not make it up this summer. But um, I'm definitely gonna be thinking about it and dreaming of what I can make with this because it is just so beautiful. If you're enjoying this haul so far, I would really love it if you would give me a thumbs up because it helps more people find my channel. Thank you so much. The last of my fabric purchases were from Blackbird Fabrics. They had a sale a few weeks ago, and so I took advantage of that. And I actually just got these in the mail yesterday, so none of these have been washed yet. So this first fabric is a Cupro Viscose blend, and I've never actually worked with Cupro before, and that's why I wanted to order this just to see what it was like. It feels very much like a sand washed silk, very, very soft, which is kind of a, I know this doesn't really make sense, but it has like a matte sheen to it. I know that's contradictory, but I don't know. It's just something about it. It's very silky feeling. It's a really beautiful fabric. And I have a specific plan for this. I want to make a another McCall's slip skirt because I think that it would um, having a slip skirt in a solid color would be really versatile in my wardrobe. And I love this sort of dark pink color. This is not gonna be in my August plans because I actually think this would be an excellent skirt for fall and I could even carry it into winter if I wore it with tights and boots. So I will eventually make this one, but probably not next month. This fabric is a cotton poplin in this ditzy floral print. I thought the print was just really pretty and actually slightly unusual for me. I usually go for darker background florals and I wanna make a shirt out of this. I was thinking probably the Fiber Mood Tilda shirt um, but I'm not 100% sure, so I don't have an immediate plan to make this. I got one and a half meters, so I should be able to easily get a short sleeve shirt out of it. Um, but yeah, I'll probably put this one in the stash for a little while, but I do really like this print. This next one is a cotton lyocell fabric, and I just could not pass this up because the embroidery is just so gorgeous. I only bought one meter of this, and I think I'm gonna do some sort of sleeveless top, maybe another Reynolds top, something along those lines. Um, I don't think that I'm going to sew this up in August just because I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it yet and I want to do it justice, but I do feel like this navy with the cream colored embroidery fabric is just so gorgeous and I'm really happy to have gotten a little sample of this. This next one is a cotton spandex jersey in this sort of retro stripey print and I think it's just so fun. This one just screams out a t-shirt dress to me, maybe like a ringer type tee with a contrasting neckband and cuffs. I think that could be super fun. Um, I don't know which pattern yet, and I don't think I'm gonna sew this up immediately, but I do really, really like these colors, and actually they feel very fall to me, so maybe I'll save it for then. And the last piece of fabric I have to share with you is in my plans list for August. It's 100% linen, and I could not resist this gorgeous plaid. 
I just love all of these colors and I love how they look together. This sort of sunsetty color combination is just one of my favorites. And this I want to make a closet core Cali shirt dress. I have made the cropped shirt before, but I really want to make the dress and I think I want to try to make it midi length. Um, my guess is that I probably don't have to do a lot to make it a midi length on me. It's probably pretty close to already being there because I'm so short. But yeah, I definitely want to try to get this made up. I always get a little bit nervous about matching plaids and getting them all lined up perfectly, but I actually have done it quite a few times, so I just need to actually sit down and do it. Um, but yeah, I really, really want this for the end of summer. I think it would be, be a super comfortable and easy breezy to wear shirt dress, just loose and flowy. So I do really want to make this up in August. I just have a few patterns to share with you that I got in July. The first one was actually a prize that I won. It was a giveaway that was hosted by Claire of Stitch Him Sew and Marissa of the Umbrian Sewist. And I won the Waves and Wild pattern of my choice. So I chose the Heyday Dungarees. I'm really excited about this because this pattern was on my list of patterns to try. And I think I might try to sew it up in the fall. So thank you so much to Claire and Marissa. It was so exciting to win that giveaway and get a pattern for free that I had been wanting to purchase. So I was really quite good with my pattern purchases. I only bought three patterns in the month of July and I've actually already sewn up all three. So far, I've been able to stick to my policy of only buying a pattern when I'm actually going to make it. So the first pattern I wanna share with you is the Victory Patterns Francis. This is a t-shirt and dress pattern. It's very fitted and it comes in a cropped length, a hip length, and a dress with sort of an A-line skirt. So the reason I bought this pattern is because I've been wanting to add a more fitted t-shirt to my collection that, that still has lots of neckline and sleeve options. And I really liked all of the different views that this pattern offers. And especially the fact that you can do a scoop neck in the front and then you have a variety of scooped backs. And I just really wanted to try it. So I bought that pattern and I've actually already made quite a few versions of it. So you will be seeing that very soon in my July makes. The second pattern that I got was from Pattern Emporium. I bought the Every Days a Weekend dress. So the reason I bought this one is because it's been so hot lately and I just wanted a jersey dress that I could throw on and be comfortable. Nothing too fitted, just very, very relaxed and breezy. So I thought that that pattern would fit the bill. I actually bought it while it was on sale for 15% off, so I saved a little bit of money. And I've already made up one version of the dress and I just love it so much that I'm very excited to make more of them in the future. Like all Pattern Emporium patterns, this comes with so many different options and you can actually make it for all seasons so i made a summer version and i think the next one i make will be for the fall and i'm just very very excited to make more of these because they are so incredibly comfortable the last pattern that i bought was for a swimsuit cover-up this is the marisol pattern from made for mermaids and i wanted to try out a kaftan style swimsuit cover-up and i thought that that particular pattern fit the bill. So I bought it and made it up and it's actually on the dress form behind me. So you'll be seeing more details about that one in a later video. So this pattern also has several different options. You can choose to have open shoulders or you can not close the side seams. You can do different lengths. You can do a curved hem. So um, yeah, that's why I bought that pattern. And like I said, I'll share more about it with you later. Now I have one last thing to share with you before we get to the big one. So I bought myself a new book. I got this book called The Fitting Book by Gina Renee Dunham and I ordered it off of Amazon. I will put an affiliate link in the description box in case you wanna check it out. It was, I think it was about $30. So the really cool thing about this book is that um, it takes you through lots of different fitting alterations for both the bodice and sleeves and pants um, and skirts. And um, I think it has a lot of really useful information, but it also has accompanying videos. So all of the different adjustments like come with a little QR code in the bottom. And I believe if you scan that QR code, it takes you to a video that walks you through the alteration in video form. So I just think that that is so useful. So I have not made it all the way through this book yet. I'm still working on it, but I've already seen a few adjustments that I think I wanna try for myself. And I think it's gonna come in really handy. And I feel like the illustrations and everything along with the videos are very clear because some of the issues that I've had with fitting books in the past is um, not really knowing for sure when I needed to make that adjustment. I do think that this has a lot of good information and I'm looking forward to integrating this into my sewing practice. So now on to the big news. So I am a little bit embarrassed to say that I sort of impulse bought myself a new serger. 
I have a Janome serger. This is sort of a basic entry level four thread serger that I have had since 2006. My mother actually had bought it for me as a gift. And I mean, it's a workhorse, it's been fine, um, but it is a pain in the neck every single time you have to thread it. And I was just, I was using my serger to make a swimsuit and the thread just kept breaking over and over and over again. And it was causing me a lot of frustration because I'd have to start over and do all four threads again, again, and again. And I was just ready to throw the thing out the window. And I'm like, why don't I just buy myself a new serger? <laughs> And I think the reason why I've resisted for so long is because my mechanical serger is fine. Like there's, it works, it's functional. There's technically nothing wrong with it, but I just have really been wanting an upgrade that has the air threading that'll make it less frustrating for me, hopefully. And, and I also wanted to upgrade to something that has more attachments so that I can use things like a ruffling foot or an elastic foot, things like that, that might make my sewing practice a little bit easier. So I went online and I bought myself a baby lock serger. So I don't have it yet as of now when I'm filming this video, I'm hoping that it will be on its way to me very soon. And I am just so excited to get into my new serger and figure it out all the little nooks and crannies. And hopefully it works really well and it'll cause me a lot less frustration. So um, it was a little bit of an expensive treat yourself, but I feel like it was worth it. And I am so, so excited to have a new serger. And I will link the one that I purchased down in the description box so you can check it out if you want to. So that is everything that I bought myself in the month of July, which was a lot, and also my plans for August. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I will see you again next time.